Hello, our next lesson is on buffer solutions. So it says there in the title, the common ion effect and buffer solutions. So let's talk first about what a buffer is. We'll get to the notes in just a second. A buffer is a solution that resists changes to pH. An example of this, our blood is buffered. So our blood has um, bicarbonate ion in it. And what this uh, allows for is for the blood to maintain a relatively constant pH. Uh, our enzymes in our bodies only function a very, very narrow range of pHs. And so it's really important that if our enzymes are to function properly, that our blood needs to have a constant pH. And so um, it is buffered, uh, naturally buffered uh, to achieve this. So uh, something very, very, very important is recognizing a buffer solution. So that's number one. A buffer solution contains a conjugate acid-base pair with both the acid and base present in relatively high concentrations. Now, what's implied here, because it says conjugate acid-base pair, is that you have either a weak acid along with its conjugate base or a weak base along with its conjugate acid. Uh, there's no such thing as a buffer solution that contains a strong acid or a strong base. Uh, since strong acids and strong bases completely ionize, there'll be none of that substance in solution, and we need that in solution to have a buffer. And secondly, not only do you need uh, conjugate acid and base in solution, as it says here, uh, you need them both in relatively high concentrations. If you have one of them that's present in a really, really, really low concentration, uh, technically that solution is not really going to be a buffer, or at least it's not going to be an effective buffer. Now, what does that mean, effective buffer? Let's take a look at number two. How is it possible that these solutions can maintain a constant pH, even if you add acid or add base? This, the pH remains uh, relatively constant. Now, not exactly the same. It does change, and it will change, but it doesn't change uh, that significantly. So here's why. It says when an acid is added uh, to a buffer solution, the base component in that solution neutralizes it so as to maintain a relatively constant pH. So something that's really, really, really important as well is what we'll get to our next lesson, buffering action. So make sure you understand, if you add an acid to a buffer solution, that acid is going to rea react with the base component of that solution. Uh, also, if you add a base to a buffer solution, the acid component of the buffer will neutralize that added base, again, uh, maintaining a relatively constant pH for that solution. So here's where the common ion effect comes into play. Uh, common ion, as the name implies here, you have an ion that is in common with uh, something in your system. So it says occurs when the ability of a weak electrolyte, such as a weak acid or a weak base that establishes equilibrium, occurs when the ability of a weak electrolyte to ionize is suppressed or lessened by the addition of one of its ions. So um, again, if you have a solution of a weak acid, you have H plus and A minus ions in solution. Uh, if you add some A minus ions uh, to that solution, it's gonna push the equilibrium to the left and the amount of the acid that ionizes is going to decrease. Take a look on page 745, the table at the top of the page. Uh, shows if you have just 0.1 molar acetic acid by itself, it's 1.3% ionized. Uh, that solution would have a pH of 2.89. Uh, if you take 0.1 molar acetic acid and mix it with 0.2 molar sodium acetate, uh, first of all, sodium acetate is um, a soluble salt. Um, and so really, we don't care about the acetate, or sorry, we don't care about the sodium ion in that solution, but we do care about acetate. So we have 0.1 molar acetic acid, and 0.2 molar acetate. Notice how much of the acetic acid ionizes now, 0.0090%, and the pH is 5.05. .05. And so, again, the point being, when you add a common ion, in this case acetate, it pushes the equilibrium to the left, causing the concentration of H plus to decrease, 
thus causing the pH to increase. And again, we see that the amount of the acid that ionizes is a lot less than if that acetate ion was not present uh, in solution. All right, so we have two types of buffers. We have acidic buffers and we have basic buffers. So an acidic buffer is one that has a pH that is less than seven. And this solution consists of a weak acid and the conjugate base of that weak acid. So a little different wording than what's shown in the notes there, same thing. So uh, the example on page 745 is an acidic buffer. You have acetic acid, a weak acid, uh, present with a relatively large quantity of its conjugate base, that being acetate. And so as we saw um, with the values in the table, the pH of that solution is less than seven. So that's an acidic buffer. So let's go ahead and uh, give a couple examples. So, whoops, I don't know if I want to use that color. Let's use my regular here. So a solution of acetic acid and sodium acetates, that would be a buffer. So now you don't want to just say acetates because there's no such thing as just acetate by itself. And so you have to have a mixture of this weak acid and some salts that contains the conjugate base of that weak acid. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and come up with another combination of substances that will lead to an acidic buffer. Do that now, please. How about uh, hydrofluoric acid and sodium fluoride or potassium fluoride or lithium fluoride, any fluoride? Uh, maybe you chose um, nitrous acid, a mixture of nitrous acid and, I don't know, potassium nitrite. That would give you a buffer solution. So any mixture of a weak acid along with the salt containing the conjugate base of that weak acid. So again, here we have uh, acetate is the conjugate base of acetic acid. Fluoride, F minus is the conjugate base of hydrofluoric acid. Nitrite is the conjugate base of nitrous acid. All right, basic buffers, of course, have a pH of greater than seven, and they consist of a solution that contains a weak base along with its conjugate acid. So a mixture of a weak base and a salt containing the conjugate acid of that weak base. Can you think of any examples? Well, what's, what's the most common weak base that we talk about or use in our examples? That would be ammonia. So let's say you had a solution that consists of a mixture of ammonia and a salt containing the conjugate base, uh, sorry, conjugate acid of that weak base. So what is the conjugate acid of ammonia? So remember, the conjugate acid has one more H plus than the base. The base has one less H plus than the acid, if we go back to the previous slide. And so we need something that contains the ammonium ion. So maybe a solution of ammonium chloride. So if you have both NH3 and NH4 plus in solution in significant quantities, uh, that solution will be a buffer. How about this one? So CH3, NH2 is called methyl ammonium or aminomethane. Uh, sometimes we use the, the term amino methane, or sorry, I said a methyl ammonia, methyl amine. Let me write these out so you can see them. So methyl amine. So we have this NH2 group here, which is called an amino group. Uh, that's why it's also called amino methane. Either way is fine. So what would be the conjugate acid of this base, methyl amine? So remember, the base has one more H plus than the acid. Uh, keep in mind, if you drew the structure for this, well, let's do that. Notice that hydrogen already has four bonds. And so we can't add the other hydrogen to the carbon. So the other hydrogen, the H plus, that this uh, molecule accepts. Uh, goes to the nitrogen. So we end up with uh, CH3 
NH3 is a cation, has a plus one charge. So we want the salt containing that cation. So methyl ammonium chloride, this is called. So again, where the CH3, NH3 is the conjugate acid of CH3, NH2. All right, example 19.1 and 743, go ahead and read it along with me, please. Calculate the concentration of H plus and the pH of a buffer solution that is 0 0.10 molar in acetic acid and 0 0.20 molar in sodium acetate. So let me go ahead and set this up for you, and then I'll have you do some practice on your own. So I'm going to do two things here just like the book does. So I'm going to start off with my uh, salt, sodium acetate, uh, soluble salt. So this is a one-way complete dissociation. And so why this is important is because we're given the concentration of the solution as a whole, 0 0.20 molar. And we want to use that to find the concentration of acetate in that solution, which, of course, uh, we have a one-to-one -one ratio, so that is also 0 0.20 molar. And then next, I want to set up the ionization equation for the weak acid. Uh, I'm not going to put water in this time. If you want to put water, that's fine. And with this, we're going to set up our ice table. So let's write over here to our Ka expression, because ultimately we want to calculate the concentration of H plus along with the pH of the solution. And the Ka of acetic acid is given to us in the back of the book. All right, so let's set up the ice table. Initial concentration of acetic acid is 0 0.10 molar. Uh, H plus initial concentration is zero. This time it's different than what we've done before. The initial concentration of acetate is not to zero. Now, the initial concentration from the ionization of acetate is zero, but we have acetate in the solution already from our sodium acetate. And so we do have an initial concentration of acetate of 0 0.20 molar. All right, let's complete our ice table. This is going to go down by x. This is going to go up by x. This is going to increase. So again, we already have some acetate in the solution from the sodium acetate. As the acetic acid ionizes, it's going to produce more acetate ions, so plus x. So here's our equilibrium concentrations. Plug those into our Ka expression. I'll do that on the next slide. So concentration of H plus is X. Oops, that looks kind of weird. Concentration of acetate 0 0.20 plus X. Concentration of acetic acid 0 0.10 minus X. Set that all equal to our Ka of acetic acid, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, I'll ask the same question as I have asked in the past. Do you want to do this the easy way or the hard way? And so I want to do this the easy way. So I'm going to assume, I'm going to write a little different maybe than what the, what the book has. Not just assume x is small. That's really what it is. Assume x is small. But I'm going to assume the x's. These ones are small. So again, think about how we can make that assumption. That assumption is more valid now than what we did previously. Why? Well, we talked about it. When you have a common ion in solution, that's going to push the equilibrium to the left, decreasing the amount of acid that ionizes. So even less of the acid is going to ionize. And so, you know, very... Um, very confident that this assumption will be valid. So, of course, we don't want to assume that this x by itself is small, then we have nothing to solve for. So, again, by assuming x is small, we're saying 0 0.20 plus that really, really, really small number is basically 0 0.20. And 0 0.10 minus that really small number is really 0 0.10 makes solving for x so much easier. We get 2x equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. 
x then has a value of 9.0 times 10 to the negative 6. And x happens to be the concentration of h plus. That's half of the answer. And then negative log that, and that'll give us the pH of the solution, 5.05. So again, look at the assumptions in the um, little above the answers to this problem and the implications for that. Uh, really, really, really important that you understand what you are doing. Of course, don't forget to check your assumptions, both of them. So plug in for x at the 0 0.20 plus x. So again, what is that? Look at that number, 0.0000090. You add that to 0 0.20, you're going to get 0 0.20. You subtract that from 0 0.10, you're going to get 0 0.10. So that assumption is valid. All right, let's take a look at exercise number 13 on page 764. Um, I think, what do I want you to do? I think I want you to do both of these. So maybe separate that space in half and do both of those. We're looking for, I believe, pH. Let's double check hydroxide ion concentration, and pH for those two buffer solutions. Go ahead and pause the video and work them both out. All right, take a look at the solution for the first one. I did not write the balanced dissociation equation uh, for the um, ammonium nitrates. We have a one-to-one -one ratio of ammonium nitrate to ammonium ions, so I know my initial concentration of ammonium is 0 0.40. Set up the ice table, plug in your equilibrium concentrations into the Kb expression. Uh, let's assume x is small. Solve for x, we get 2.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, which happens to be our hydroxide ion concentration. Uh, be careful, if you negative log that, you're going to get the pOH. And I believe the question asks for the pH. So I set up here 14.000 minus the log of the OH minus concentration, and we get a pH of 9.36. If you did something wrong here, go ahead and fix that and fix the second one as well. And pause, and we'll go over the answer to that as soon as you're ready with that one. All right, so here's the setup for the next one. Again, uh, I didn't mention it last time, but make sure anytime you're writing the ionization equation for uh, a weak base, you have to put water in the equation. No exceptions here. So similar setup as last time. Solve for x. x happens to be our hydroxide ion concentration. Negative log that to get the pOH. Subtract that from 14 to get the pH. Now something you might be questioning is, wait a second. I thought you said that um, a basic buffer... Uh, a buffer that consists of a weak base along with its conjugate acid will have a pH of greater than 7. Why does this buffer have a pH of less than 7? Well, we have kind of an interesting thing going on here where the concentration of the conjugate acid, uh, in this case, uh, the C6H5NH3+, plus, um, is a much, much, much higher concentration than the base. And so this time we end up with a pH of this buffer that's less than 7. That's usually not the case. Usually when you're making a buffer solution, you want, uh, you know, they don't have to be equal concentrations, but pretty close concentrations for your weak base and its conjugate acid. And so in that event, then you're going to get a pH that is greater than 7 if uh, you have a basic buffer. Nevertheless, it does happen where you have a pH of less than 7. So I've shown you one way out of two uh, to determine the pH of either acidic or basic buffer. Another way that you can do buffer calculations is using something called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So let's, uh, let's derive that equation. So let's start off with the Ka expression for some uh, weak acid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this so that it reads not Ka equals, but rather concentration of H plus equals. So go ahead and rearrange that. And so I'm going to write it like this. Ka times concentration of HA over concentration of A minus. And then let's negative log 
both sides. So negative log of H plus is called pH. Negative log of Ka is called pKa. And we're multiplying the Ka times all of this. So when we take the log, we're going to end up adding these. So we get the log of, now it's negative log technically. So it's going to be log of the inverse. So concentration of A minus over concentration of HA. So make sure you know why it's written that way. So again, it's negative log of each side we're taking. So we get PKA plus the log of uh, concentration of the conjugate base, you want, if you want to write it that way, over the concentration of the acid. So this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation that we can use for an acidic buffer. Uh, we can set up something similar for a basic buffer where we have Kb equals Hb plus times OH minus over B. Uh, rearrange to solve for OH minus, negative log both sides. And in this case, we would get POH equals PKB plus the log of, I'm going to write it differently this time. I'm going to write conjugate acid over base. Again, conjugate acid being BH plus, and then the base being just B. So either of those will be fine. Take a look at 19.2. So it says it calculates the uh, pH of the buffer solution in example 19.1. So we had a mixture of 0 0.10 molar acetic acid and 0 0.20 molar acetate. And so I'm just going to set that up here. So we're trying to find the pH of the solution. So we take the pKa, so Ka of acetic acid 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, the pKa then is 4.74, plus the log of concentration of the conjugate base, which is 0 0.20 molar, over the concentration of the acid, which was 0 0.10 molar. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you get. So we end up with a pH of 5.05, .05, or 5.04 technically, I guess, is fine. And how does that compare to what we got when we used the Ka and our ice table and all that stuff? Got 5.05, .05, so pretty close. So again, it's the same thing as using Ka, it's just a different form. So either one is fine, use Ka, and ice table and equilibrium concentrations or use the Henderson-Hasselbalch to calculate pH. All right, so number 11 on page 764. Um, let's see, let's do, I don't know, what should we do, Henderson-Hasselbalch or Ka? This time, let's do Henderson-Hasselbalch. So don't use a Ka, strictly use a Henderson-Hasselbalch to set that up. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. All right, so using the value in the back of the book, we get a pKa of 7.45. Again, keep in mind, make sure you get these concentrations put in the right place. Conjugate base over concentration of acid, and we get a pH of 7.75. Uh, take a look at 19.3. It's the same thing, except we have a basic buffer this time. It says calculate hydroxide ion concentration and the pH of a solution that is 0.2 molar in aqueous ammonia and 0 0.10 molar in ammonium chloride. So the book uses, what does the book use? The book uses Kb, uh, but if you um, use the Henderson-Hasselbalch, which is shown uh, just below that solution, um, you can certainly do that way as well. So either way is fine. In fact, for number 13 on page 764 we already did that problem using uh, the kbs of ammonia and uh, aniline this time i want you to do both of those uh, problems this time using the henderson hasselbach for a uh, 
for a base. So go ahead and pause the video and do that now. All right, so here's our setups. Compare what you got to the answers in number 13 that you did using KBs. And it should be about the same thing. So again, buffer solutions. Use KA or Henderson-Hasselbach. Use KB or Henderson-Hasselbach. Choice is yours. All right, that concludes this lesson. Next time we'll talk about how buffers actually help to keep a pH relatively constant. Thanks for watching.